Well, uh, biophilic cities recognize the, that nature, contact with nature, is absolutely essential. Essential to live uh, a healthy, productive, meaningful life. So in that way, uh, I would never say that it's a luxury. Uh, it's something that has to be designed into the core of, of neighborhoods and cities. We have to have nature all around us where we, where we live and where we work. It can't just be something that is somewhere far, far away that you visit. Uh, it has to be experienced in our, in our normally, normal day. And so I would say in terms of uh, um, a luxury for a, a developed country, uh, these are investments that pay great dividends. And the same is true for the develop developing world. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the uh, green interventions, the, the ways in which we can incorporate nature into neighborhoods are things that uh, help to make those neighborhoods more resilient, uh, help to lift up people, help to address poverty, everything from um, incorporating gardens for, for growing food, uh, collecting rainwater, uh, improving the quality of life in, in those neighborhoods. Those, those are not luxuries or, at all, but again, um, very good investments. Well, um, yes, we're, we're looking at, at uh, examples of, of how um, nature can, can be incorporated into favelas, for example, uh, in cities like Rio de Janeiro, um, um, places where there are informal housing settlements and uh, innovative parks that incorporate edible landscaping um, and gathering spaces and uh, um, you know, trail systems, ways to provide access to uh, shopping and jobs. Uh, that are uh, kind of you know natural and uh, have elements of, of nature in them. Uh, so those are some of the examples that that we are beginning to see in, in cities in the developing world. Well, Singapore is doing so many things to incorporate nature. It's um, hard to imagine things that you are not already uh, doing here. But there are. Uh, a number of cities uh, around the world doing innovative biophilic or urbanism. And just a few examples, uh, cities like Portland um, have been innovating and incorporating stormwater uh, management into their cities. So they have 1,400 or something like that green streets that uh, provide an element of, of nature in the middle of the city but also collect and treat uh, stormwater there. Um, cities like Rotterdam uh, that are using green rooftops and thinking holistically about how to manage water very similarly, in fact, and, and trying to address a sea level rise and climate change adaptation and, and climate proof uh, their city, as they, as they say, uh, through the use of greenery and nature uh, and, and innovative water retention uh, techniques. Um, Wellington, New Zealand is one of our partner cities in the Biophilic Cities Project, and they are doing many things, but beginning to think about how the marine environment that surrounds that city could be uh, thought of as a, it is an important part of the nature there. So the idea of, of blue belts that, that uh, complement the green belts, so thinking more uh, of an integrated land, sea uh, kind of uh, nature. Uh, San Francisco would be another example of that uh, um, Singapore could learn from in the sense of very creative ideas for engaging the public around the reuse of small spaces, uh, taking, small, taking parking spaces, for example, and turning them into parklets, um, and uh, innovating their uh, permitting system to make it easier to, uh, for citizens to install things like sidewalk gardens. Well, I can appreciate that uh, for developers um, looking at some of these biophilic design ideas, uh, that they are investments and they might raise the cost of, of those projects, uh, at least in the short term. But for um, many of the techniques and interventions that we're talking about, whether it's um, tree planting or a green rooftop or a green wall, uh, they definitely pay for themselves, and, and, and often in a r very short period of time. Daylighting, bringing nature into the interior spaces of schools and, and office environments um, leads to um, pretty significant uh, um, improvements in, in the quality of the working environment and in the productivity of workers. So those are things that developers and companies um, should want, you know, want to know about and, and pretty, pretty compelling uh, economic reasons for, for investing in biophilic uh, elements.